Hi fellows! In this episode we take a look at how we can create and export a standard map using Map Layout in a Global Mapper Pro software. Let's get right to it. At first, we import the DM layer into the software to get a map layout from this layer. It could be any other layer or map, not necessarily a DEM. When you import a your layer, it's time to open Map Layout Editor that is accessible in the toolbar. If you click on it, a window is opened, which is New Layout Options window. You will first need to set up the map layout definitions. For the template, we can choose one of the available templates for our map from the template section. There are a few templates by default. In the next section, we need to select paper size from the drop-down menu. You can choose a specific size based on your work and need. If you couldn't find your desired size, you can create it by setting up custom paper available at the right end. You can also choose orientation if your map is portrait or landscape. And finally, we check the bounds option so that map layout is created based on the specified range. By default, the bounds definition will be all loaded data. Once you have set up the map layout options, click on OK to open Map Layout Editor. This is where map layout elements such as the scale bar, elevation legend, margins, map legend, and north arrow are added to the map layout. We can make the dimensions of map layout bigger or smaller. Here we enlarge it to fill the size of the page. If you right click on the map and select properties, you can apply settings on the map. The most important issue in map layout is specifying the grid frame of the map. In the grid tab section, you can choose latitude and longitude. Or if you have a specific coordinate system for the map, choose that coordinate system for the output. In the tick mark label orientation section, you can specify how your grid will be displayed. We set it to the parallel to frame option. In this case, top and bottom will be horizontal and sides will be vertical. And finally, choose a suitable font for the grid to have a better appearance. Just like this. In the Insert tab, there are other useful options that we can use. The first one is the Elevation Legend. In the Open window, we can change the settings. And in the Units section, specify if Legend units should display in Metric, Statute, or Custom units. We put it on the Metric option to display the unit as meters. In the Style section, you can choose a font to use for the Elevation Legend, and set a title for the Legend. If the elevation layer is using a shader based on slope, you can check the option show slope as percentage grade instead of degrees to display a legend showing percent change rather than a change by degrees. From the general tab, we can check the draw frame on element option. As you can see, our legend was generated and now we can put it on the right place. If you right click on it and go to the properties, you can see the same window again and make some changes.
The next option that is image element inserts an image as a new image element into the map layout. Once selected, the insert image element dialog will appear, allowing you to browse to an image file and load it as an element to the map layout. The next option is map legend. If the map has various parameters, we can activate their legend. The next option is north arrow that inserts a north arrow into the map layout. Use the drop down menu on the north arrow tab to select the symbol. We put it somewhere on the map. On the general tab are options to add a frame. Select the frame style and adjust transparency. This is a dynamic element and will adjust according to changes in the map layout orientation. The next item is the scale bar element. Use the font option to set up the style for the scale bar. For the tick mark spacing, there are two options. Automatic, which is the default by its software, and the other one is a specified distance and units, which customize the units and length of the scale. When this is selected, the distance and units fields will be enabled, and you must specify values for both. and we put it in the right place. Then we can change its dimensions. A name needs to be written for each map. For this reason, we choose the proper name for our map. The appropriate font can be selected. and put it in the right place so that it has a better view. We can also change the background color of the map using the map properties. You just have to right click on the map and go to the properties and from the general tab choose an appropriate background and make changes if you need it. From the file tab, we can save the template to use it later on.
we can also print the map. or even export it as a geospatial PDF.